ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಅಗಜಾನನ ಪದ್ಮಾರ್ಕಂ ಗಜಾನನ ಅಹರ್ನಿಶಂ ಅನೇಕದಂ ತಂ ಭಕ್ತಾನ ಏಕದಂತಂ ಉಪಾಸ್ಮಹೆ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಗಣೇಶ ಪುರಾಣ ಫಾರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವೈಲ್ ನಾರದ ವಾಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ದ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿಂತಾಮಣಿ ವಿನಾಯಕ ಮೆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ದ ಗಣೇಶ ಕುಂಡ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ರುಕ್ಮಾಂಗದ ಕೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಡಿಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಸೆಲೆಸ್ಟಿಯಲ್ ಬಾಡಿ ನಾರದ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಹಲ್ಯ ಹೂ ಗಾಟ್ ವಯೋಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೆಮಿಗಾಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಇಂದ್ರ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಇಂದ್ರ ಒನ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಅಮರಾವತಿ ಹಿಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ನಾರದ ವಿಸಿಟೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೆಷರ್ he asked narada is there any special thing that exists across the three worlds which he which will give him the ultimate among the pleasure so narada used every situation to do good for the world but of course in that process someone might get prob- get into a problem but ultimately a good will going to happen across the worlds so narada told him about the wife of sage gautama ahalya who happens to be created by the brahma himself having has celestial beauty much much higher than all the apsara astris like rambha urvashi tilottama she was more beautiful than them and she was equally divine like anasuya vasishta sangna who are the divine wives of the great sages or the gods so he explained about her and then he simply disappeared from the spot indra now having put his mind on ahalya he came down to gautama's hermitage he took the form of gautama and when gautama was out for a ritual bath at that time he entered the hermitage mimicking the voice of gautama he requested ahalya for having a sex with him in the bed ahalya initially though she was wondering about this mistake done by gautama but later she just followed whatever is the order given by her husband assuming the one who has come inside was actually his her husband gautama who actually was the king indra indra violated her had mated with her in the bed and finally at the height of their mating she realized by the celestial fragrance coming out of his body that he is somebody else and immediately she told him that she will going to curse him but by that time indra took the real shape and he told her he is the king of all the three worlds so she also happens to be her subject and so indra started mentioning that there is nothing wrong he had done but ahalya is now more worried what will be the fate of her husband who once returned back to the hermitage how he will going to receive it how he will going to take it and how he will going to curse her she is more worried about how she will be able to show her face to the rest of the world in the following days hearing this story rukmangada asked narada what then happened when gautama returned o great sage tell me everything as i am very curious to know narada continued the story immediately after having completed his obligatory rituals gautama went back to his hermitage and he called his wife near and saying give me some water to wash my feet because he came from outside he need to wash his feet before entering into the home that's his hermitage why haven't you appeared in front of me straight away as before because usually whenever gautama by the time gautama returns from completing his obligatory ritual uh, his wife ahalya used to wait for him near the door and used to give him a pot of water to wash his legs wash his feet but th- today she is not appearing anywhere near the door why haven't you brought a seat and why aren't you saying something pleasing after she had heard his words she began trembling like a creeper and emerging with face downcast she immediately came to the sage and prostrated herself on the ground 
her head placed in the direction of his feet, distressed and afraid of a curse, she then spoke softly to the sage. At dawn, you left to have a bath, as is your usual practice. Assuming your appearance, the depraved Indra, the Lord of God, he came to the hermitage and he said to me, after I had seen a beautiful woman who was amorous and even more beautiful than the nymphs, this Ali assumed that these are the words told by Gautama. So it was Indra who, in the guise of Gautama, who was telling these words that he saw a beautiful woman who was amorous and even more beautiful than the nymphs, my mind would not remain, remain firmly fixed on recitation to the gods during the obligatory rituals. So I abandoned all those obligatory rituals and turned back and returned to the hermitage. Now give me sex, O oh lovely lady. This is what was told to me. Thinking that it was certainly you, in error, I obeyed your command exactly. However, after having smelled those celestial fragrances, I had a misgiving once again and said to that person, O oh, evil man, if you do not want to become ashes because of my curse, tell me who you are immediately. And at that point, Indra was afraid and showed his real face. That is when Ahalya came to know that she was violated by someone else, maybe Indra in the guise of Gautama. And it is because of that reason she did not came immediately to the door in order to, uh, in order to welcome the sage Gautama. O oh, excellent sage, I was ashamed. Forgive me for this transgression. It is not a fault then made known by oneself, but it is fault when made known by another. If she was deliberately, knowingly, if she had gone to the bed with Indra, it would have been her mistake. But she was not knowing anything about that. And she came to know about it only later after everything is completed. So she is telling about what is usually the practice. One should not publicly display gifts, honor and dishonor, herbs, sex, prosperity, household quarrels, and long life and spells. So Ahalya was trying to plead her that she is not guilty of whatever has happened. It is Indra who had violated her. But unfortunately, which man will be able to take something that's happened to Ahalya? After that sage Gautama heard this, his senses swirling with anger, the sage cursed his own wife. O oh, ill-behaved woman, you will become a rock. You will recognize neither my own body. Want to recognize my own body, my demeanor, nor my gestures, because your very lustful heart has been fixed on another man. You will regain your own body only when touched by the foot of King Rama, son of Dasharatha, when he is wandering from forest to forest. This is par another part of the story which came, which continue in the Ramayana. It was during the Ramayana, Rama was brought to that Ahalya Ashrama by the sage Vishwamitra, where by touching the feet of Rama, Ahalya turned into a celestial woman. But of course, the story can also be explained in a different way. Ahalya being ashamed, she remained like a rock, not meeting anyone else and nobody was coming to their hermitage because sage Gautama also had left her and he went out for doing his penance. So Ahalya was staying alone for so many years, staying alone without talking to anybody as though she was a rock. And later, it was King Rama, because of his, uh, because of his uh, passion and because of his compassion to the people, he came to her hermitage and he uttered, saying that she was not at any fault. And because of that reason, the world again had accepted. If King Rama himself had told that she is not having any mistake, the whole world has accepted her back. 
So the story can also be understood in this particular fashion. Whatever it is, let's come back to our story. Narada, who is continuing the story, he said, Straight away she became a rock due to the power in the words of the repository of austerity. When he had heard about her curse, Indra, who is a chastiser of Paka, trembled just like the mountain Himavat when it is met by a hurricane. So Indra was started trembling that he will also going to be cursed. In his mind he wondered, what would I do now? If I were to stay hidden in the ocean, pond, pool or a lotus, then that sage would always find me. Therefore, Indra, the thunderbolt bearer, I mean, that's his another name, he roamed about in the form of a cat and Gautama could not see him in the door, in the house, nor in the hermitage. He took the form of a cat and he slipped away from that hermitage. So, he ran away and he wondered, where has Indra, the enemy of Danavas, had gone? He, the Danavas are the Rakshasas whose enemy was Indra. Where he has gone? Who, one who defiled my wife, but through meditation, the excellent sage pursued him instantaneously and said, Because you are the Lord of Gods, I will not turn you into ashes. Otherwise, Gautama would have turned Indra into ashes because he is the Lord of the Gods. Yet, since you are a rogue, being the husband of Shachi, I will now going to curse you. Be possessed of 1000 vaginas all over your body. For as long as this speech uttered in anger by the sage is heard, your own body will look as though it is stamped with 1000 vaginas. Immersed in an ocean of misery, Indra was, has got completely grieved. Indra said, Many times have I been taught various teachings by the eminent, but I have not given careful consideration to the statements of the eminent, because one's own opinion brings benefits, whereas everything uttered by other is conducive to ruin. You could have heard about so many commandments. So many eminent people would have told about several great things, but ultimately an individual always will do what he feels as fit for him. And it is because of that reason, because an individual loses his senses, that he did not understand the essence of what the others, what the, those eminent people are talking. So because of that reason, an individual will get into a gutter of situation. The opinion of the elderly person is very sound, but the whimsy of an amorous woman leads to ruin. That if you are set your eye on some other woman, and if you go behind with a lust feeling behind the beauty of that woman, you will always get spoiled. So whatever happened to him, he is explaining the same thing. In view of Narada's declaration, how can I go to the blameless woman? It was Narada who basically instigated him to go to that woman. And now being the king of gods, how will I show my face to my own people? Where has gone my celestial body? Because his whole body is now filled with thousand vaginas. Whatever am I going to say to my wife? So how will I going to show my face to my wife? Damn me and damn the comma through whom I have come to this contemptible condition. It's because of the lust that I had come into this particular condition. Whether karma is good or bad, it is. it needs to be experienced by every living being. So he violated Ahalya. Of course, Ahalya was also cursed to become a rock. But on the other side, though he is the king of the gods, he is now marked with thousand vaginas all over his body. So after being born as an animal, I will destroy this wild self. Taking the form of an Indragopa beetle, I will stay in the lotus filled with birds. 
Thus ends the 31st chapter of Upasana Khanda of the glorious Ganesha Purana in which both Ahalya and Indra were cursed by the sage Gautama for the mistake that they had done. But here Ahalya was basically faultless because she was not knowing the person who came there was Indra. But according to Gautama, she could have smelled the capability she because she was living with her husband since long time she know his body she know his gestures she know the way he used to behave so how can she make a mistake because she was having a lust for some other man she got into that and she got cheated by indra that's what the gautama's word and with that he cursed ahalya but then he didn't left even indra also otherwise he would have burnt him into ashes but since he is the king of the demigods, he cursed him to have thousand Vijayanas because he was after having the Vijayana of a woman. He was having the lust for the Vijayana. He was having the lust for the sex. So you will, you desire, deserve to have so many of them all over your body so that you will transcend for your lust for having the Vijayana of some other woman. This is how exactly the curse goes. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmir Puravasini Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidyadanancha Dehime Goodbye.